Hi, everybody. This is um, Cheryl Richardson here on Hay House's uh, Facebook page, Hay House Live. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. And uh, I'm going to spend a little time with you taking some of your questions, maybe doing some coaching if you'd like a little coaching, and um, to talk to you about the program that I'm doing in April in Las Vegas, which is a cool place to teach, let me tell you. Great shows, great workshops. I'm going to get to some myself at Hay House Live. And um, so I thought I would tell you a little bit about the workshop that I'm doing there and then take any questions you might have. And um, it's pretty bright here today, so I hope you can see this okay. Um, yeah, do me a favor and just give me a comment letting me know that you can hear me and see me just fine so I know this is working. And um, yeah, so I'm here to support you in any way I can. I just came back from the gym. Strong workout this morning, good self-care, making my uh, health a priority this year. I mean, I have for a number of years, but this year it's like really buckling down and making sure that I get to the gym on a regular basis and uh, make my physical health, along with my emotional and spiritual health, a top priority. That's good. That's called extreme self-care. Thanks, Maria and May. Um, I'm glad that you, uh, I love you too, and I'm glad you can hear me. Hi, Cheryl, N namesake, how you doing? Um, so yeah, I'm going to be in, uh, hi Diane, <laughs> hi, I miss you, I miss Hay House Radio, I really do, um, and Chelsea, hi Chelsea. So uh, I am going to be in Vegas on April 8th, Hay House Live is doing several events that weekend, lots of great people to see, there's a writer's workshop, there are one day workshops, I'm going to be there, Chris Northrup's going to be there, Brian Weiss. Greg Braden, who just emailed me from Australia, he's going to be there. He and I are going to try and get together. We both are huge Prince fans, and we're so heartbroken that he's, um, you know, that he's passed on. So Greg emailed me and said, hey, let's, um, let's see if we can take in a Prince tribute show, <laughs> which would be so much fun with him. He's a sweetheart. And there's just Joe Dispenza is going to be there, love Joe, and Robert Holden. And it's Robert Holden's birthday that weekend. Make a note if you're coming to wish him a happy birthday. Um, so I'm going to be there on Saturday the 8th. And my workshop is called the Extreme Self-Care Boot Camp. So I've done the self-care boot camp before. We're going to take it up a notch this time. And so usually what I do is... Um, <laughs> Sorry, Diane, that's very funny. Diane's text, uh, Diane's commenting, party like it's 1999. Don't get me started. I'll start singing Prince songs, and it won't be pretty. <laughs> He's too good to even begin to try and, uh, try and uh, not mimic. I don't want to say mimic, but copy, cover. Not going to do that. Anyway, um, so the Art of Extreme Self-Care extreme self Boot Camp. Here's what I do during those days. It's something that's kind of different and really fun. Um, first of all, I kind of take the temperature of the audience, get a sense of who's there, what's going on, what kinds of self-care issues people are grappling with. And then I uh, give a few exercises, depending on what the mood or the temperature of the audience is, a couple of exercises related to self-care, just to sort of get us thinking about things like, and this might change because at this point when I teach, I really trust my intuition and I work with the room. But I do look at things like, you know, what are the, what are the, um, the priorities that are important to you at this time in your life? What are the goals that you're pursuing? What are the goals that you've been pursuing that you're maybe having a tough time achieving? And then even more importantly, what, are the, what things are draining your energy that might be preventing you from... Um, accomplishing those goals or living the way you want to live or honoring your self-care in the way that you want to honor your self-care. So we look at some of those blocks, like what are some of the things that are getting in the way of you uh, making more money, finding the job that you want, ending the relationship you know you need to end, finding the love that you're looking for, taking better care of your physical health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, um, uh, Eliminating the clutter that you have in your life that you've been trying to get rid of for a long time. Simplifying whatever it might be, improving your relationship with your kids. I mean, I really cover the gamut. And, uh, and so we explore a few, we explore some of those things related to priorities and blocks. And then what I do 
that's really fun is I actually bring people uh, up on stage and I, I do a coaching session with them in front of the audience and I use that coaching session to teach certain self-care principles to everybody in the room. So, um, you know, we might have different details related to what is or isn't working in our lives, but oftentimes the solutions are very similar for everybody. So I will take somebody up on, um, up on stage, work with them one-on-one, -on -one, and then I'm always listening for what can the rest of the audience gain from this? Like, what else do, what do all of you need to know? Even though this looks like um, it's an issue related to money with this person, how does that relate to your issue with clutter? Or how does it relate to your issue with draining relationships? And um, that's something I've done for a number of years, and it's a lot of fun. The other thing that I do during that day, especially for people who are coaches, there we go, I just froze for a minute. I make a point of demonstrating uh, the different coaching techniques that I use or the, the thinking that goes on in my head as I'm working with somebody so that those of you who are coaches, who are professional coaches, and who want to learn how to work more effectively with your clients can use some of what I'm doing. And certainly at this point, because I've been, um, I've been coaching a long, long time, uh, I make a point of using a lot of intuition, which is really kind of grounded in my, uh, it's grounded just in my experience. You know, a lot of really good intuition comes from doing things, doing something for a long time uh, and <clears throat> seeing a lot of the same common blocks and issues that people have and helping people to, um, helping people to overcome those blocks. So, a lot of times I'll just find myself naturally tuning into an experience from before, uh, before I even know what's going on that's related to the person that I'm sitting with. And then we do lots of questions from the audience, a lot of interacting. So it's a very interactive day. And then sometimes I mix in exercises where you'll do with people in the room. It really, it really depends on what's happening. And, you know, I trust when I'm working with a group, I trust in the power of group mind. And the fact that uh, a lot of times when one issue comes up for somebody, it's related to everybody in the room in some way. And so then we might just sort of veer off left and go down that road and uh, help people. So let me, um, <clears throat> let me do this. Let me ask you to, in the uh, comment section, just give me some examples of uh, questions you might have or areas, you know, one or two lines about an area that you, where you might feel stuck. And I'll give you an example of a little bit of, um, a little bit of maybe laser coaching, we'll see, but a little bit of coaching and how it can relate to everybody listening, not just the person, um, not just the person that I'm addressing. So if you have a question or a comment, um, go ahead and put it in there. And then hopefully Chelsea, if you can unpin the hay house. Oh, there we go. Then I'll be able to see. All right, there we go. Um, so Diane has been single and she wants to find a romantic partner. All right, Diane, here's what you do. You ready? Uh, first of all, because who you end up spending your life with, regardless of how much time it is, is so important. Uh, you want to make sure that you put some real thought and energy into uh, what you're looking for in a partner. So here's an exercise I would give you. And this, by the way, can be used for everybody listening in relation to anything you'd like to draw into your life. It might be an employee that you're looking for, somebody to help you out. It might be uh, a new friend. It might be a new job. Whatever it is that you're trying to um, draw into your life, uh, this is what you want to do. You want to put some, really energy, some, some real energy behind specifically what you're looking for. So Diana, you want to, uh, you want to make a point to begin profiling your ideal partner. What does he or she look like? Uh, you know, what are their intellectual qualities, spiritual qualities, physical, uh, mental, um, you know, what, what might they value? Uh, I mean, everything you can think of. When I met my husband, Michael, I did that before I met him. I spent seven days working on this profile of my ideal partner. 
you know, what kind of a man did I find attractive? So what was I looking for physically? What kind of values did I want him to have? What kind of interests did I want us to share? I certainly wanted him to have a, a demonstrated commitment to personal growth because that was important to me and I wasn't interested in being in a relationship with somebody who didn't check under the hood. I knew that was going to be a problem. I was interested in somebody who um, embraced the idea of going to counseling, you know, had been had um, gone to counseling already themselves and was open to that if their relationship uh, were to get into trouble, which it always does, people. If you're married for a long period of time, you, something comes up and you always need to get support. So I wanted to make sure that I was going to be in a relationship with somebody who was willing to get that support. So every day I would read the list that I created and then add to it anything else that occurred to me. At the end of seven days, I shared that list with a couple of people uh, friends of mine who I really loved and respected and I asked them to uh, read the list and notice anything that I might have excluded or you know anything that they would suggest that I would add and then I would go ahead add that and so by the end of a couple of weeks I had a great profile of somebody and just working on whatever it is you're fine-tuning that you're putting into writing and putting it into writing is important so whether it's the job, the friend, the romantic partner, a new pet, a new home, a new apartment, whatever it might be, you're, you're actually energizing what it is you want every single day instead of what you don't want. So instead of saying, oh, I'm single and I just can't meet anybody, which is energizing what you don't want, I put energy behind what I wanted. And so I made a point to, uh, at the end of a couple of weeks, then I really looked at what were the seven most important characteristics out of that whole profile. Those two things I did. That was the first one. So I made a point of just listing the seven characteristics that was important. And then I used that to just share with friends and family that, you know what, I'm ready to meet a partner. I'm interested in a romantic relationship and here's what I'm looking for. And so I was able to, you know, give them the seven, seven examples, which by the way, helps people to think of people that they might recommend you meet more easily because it, 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 it tunes the brain into what it is specifically that you're looking for. Here's the other thing I did, and Diana, this is really important, and this is important for anybody, excuse me, who's trying to draw um, somebody, you know, a person into their lives, an employee, a friend, a partner, whatever. You have to look at that list and ask yourself, how do I weigh in when it comes to this list? How financially stable am I? How open am I to counseling? You know, when I looked at how, uh, how much do I value my own health if I want a healthy partner? How much do I invest in my spiritual life if I want a partner who invests in his or her spiritual life? And then you get about the business of making sure you become more and more like the profile that you've created so that you're not trying to attract somebody you can't match. I think that's really important and it becomes a wonderful, um, a wonderful roadmap for your own personal growth and I really you know I really worked on that and then of course when you do meet a partner the great thing about meeting a partner is they then challenge you to grow because as you uh, as you move forward in this relationship as you swim down that that relationship river uh, you're always challenging each other to grow and um, Harville Hendricks who wrote keeping the love you find getting the love you want is another book love his work and uh, I learned a lot from Harville about uh, how we will attract to us the very people who are incapable of meeting our most important needs so that we can grow. And so you want a partner who's committed to growth. If they ain't committed to growth, it's just going to be a whole bunch of headaches and you don't need that. All right. So that's my, uh, that's my quick little advice for you, Diana. So let's see. Um, uh, cacao says I'm a floral essence therapist love essence flower essences sometimes my work goes well money comes fluently but sometimes my mind starts to think about the future and I feel stuck the result of this is all my patients this week didn't come okay so first of all if you're self-employed and you're really struggling with cash flow then you have to ask yourself do I have a consistent enough source of income so that I'm able to grow my business joyfully instead of painfully. This is important, Cacao, because we all have a wise part of us that has our best interest at heart. This is important for everybody who wants to create abundance in your life and who doesn't. This is really important. We all have this wise part of us who always has our best interest at heart. If we don't take good care of the, the 
abundance or the wealth or the money that we already have we send a message to this wise part that we probably are not a good steward for more so we tend to hold back the abundance sometimes when you're growing a business a practice any kind of a business what it means cacao is that you need to get a job to bring in a consistent source of income and I know before you like tense up or roll your eyes people hate when I say this but the truth is this our clients can smell desperation a mile away and energetically when we're scared we're not putting out the right vibe so getting a job whether it's part-time or full-time and growing your practice on the side it's exactly how I did it as a coach I didn't have a lot of money uh, when I started out I mean I had a job I was doing consulting work when I started coaching and I started coaching people for free in an effort to really build my practice and to get good at what I was doing um, but it took me a while to, to it took me two years to create a referral generated cons, uh, uh, a referral generated practice with a wait list two years so that meant I had to keep working at other jobs in order to have a consistent source of income coming in so that I could build my business joyfully instead of always worrying about money so that's what I want for you I want you to build your business joyfully cacao so that means if you've got to get a job look for something that's not very stressful maybe something it might be at um, a healing center or a yoga studio or something that's related to your business so that it's fun for you it's joyful and so you get to meet people who might be great clients at some point um, you'll find the minute you make a commitment to make your financial health a top priority the universe is going to rally behind you now that might mean that you're going to get sent some clients and a part of you is going to go ah oh, see that I can relax I don't really need to get a job wrong get the job anyway we want to create an abundance of uh, an abundance of peace as you grow this business an abundance of belief in yourself and an abundance of belief in your ability to earn the living that you want to earn and it's really hard to do that when you look in the checkbook and you see and I remember this well people I did I you know I grew myself from nothing and I remember looking in the checkbook and every time I had to write out a check cringing because the money was decreasing until I started to read great books by Emmett Fox and Catherine Ponder and Florence Scovel Shin that said wait a minute how you think about your money is influencing how much you make and how much you keep and I started changing that little by little and I kept my job as I built my business and I didn't leave any of my consulting work until I had a very strong referral generated practice with a wait list and that allowed me to then go ahead and um, leave my work and just coach full time so I hope that's helpful cacao and I wish you all the very best um, and I love the work that you're doing I'm a huge fan of flower essence work huge fan okay that's a very important to challenge myself with the seven qualities in the ideal partner yeah Paul so important I mean Jesus it's like going to a bar and thinking you're gonna meet like an awesome life partner I mean can it happen yeah but if you don't put any thought behind it if you don't really put I mean my relationship my marriage to Michael has been the single most influential important foundational piece in my life when that's rocky my whole life's rocky when that's humming along happy my whole life feels better so that's where we need to really put our energy is in those ideal partners we need to you know put that energy into um, into finding the kind of partner that we really want to help us grow and evolve Gretchen has been in a bad relationship with an alcoholic and it ended badly and I'm stuck in my head I don't know what to do get your ass to Al-Anon Gretchen um, the 12-step programs is where I began my journey many many years ago and it saved my life and it saved me from a lot of difficult relationships if you read my book the unmistakable touch of grace it will share with you the story um, I would recommend that book to you Gretchen uh, it's kind of like a spiritual memoir but it really shows my own personal growth evolution and my own spiritual evolution and Al-Anon was a really big part of that it will save your life if you have to go to a meeting every day go to a meeting every single day and that will absolutely get you on the right track any relationship with an active alcoholic is is more than likely going to end badly 
And uh, it's just, that's just the nature of the beast. And get yourself into, uh, into Al-Anon. Go to as many meetings as you can. If you don't like the meeting you go to, go to a different one. And here's what I would say to you, Gretchen. I say this to people all the time when I recommend the 12-step programs. God, the universe, spirit, our creator, however you define that for yourself, has a message for you. And that message is waiting at an Al-Anon meeting. And so I often used to say on my radio show, I want you to go to a meeting and then I want you to email me the message you get from that meeting um, that you knew was a direct message from God about your, your path forward. So Gretchen, you can do that. And you can email me at Cheryl at Cheryl Richardson.com. Cheryl at Cheryl Richardson.com. And tell me the message that you get. I would love to hear that. I would love to hear what you discover because I know Life loves you, and I know that um, you will find uh, you will find a divine message there for you that's going to help you move forward. It's going to help you get out of here and get back down into here. Mwah. All right, sweetheart. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, people are saying, any message for me? Sorry, I'm not a psychic. Um, I'm pretty intuitive, but I don't do that kind of reading. If you have a question, happy to... Um, um, Let's see. Here we go. Well, Jim, I'm glad you're here. Jim says, I don't know how I got here, but I'm always drawn to anything with a positive message. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, my dear. I really am. Uh, let's see. I'm having night terrors and very scared. Any tips on how to help with this? Yes. Jeanette? Jeanetta? Uh, no, Jeanette. First of all, sweetheart, you're not alone. A lot of people are struggling with anxiety right now. Last night on my Facebook page... Um, I did a tapping session for people dealing with anxiety, fear, depression. So if you go to Cheryl Richardson um, and watch that video, so sit in a quiet place, you know, when you have some time to yourself, go through that video and do the tapping with me. I start out kind of quick and then it gets slower, so hang in there. Do the tapping with me and I promise you, Jeanette, like I can pretty much promise you, you'll feel better by the end. I was testing people throughout the session People who started with a lot of anxiety, and by the end of it, they had a, they, their anxiety was so uh, had decreased so much that it really showed me that this is a beautiful um, uh, Facebook Live is a really great way to uh, do tapping, and I'm going to do more of that. So, Jeanette, make sure you like the page so that you'll get notified. Um, and let me just say this, Jeanette, this is true for anybody dealing with anxiety. Just let me move my pigtails. <laughs> um, Right here, if you just do this, Jeanette, this one's for you. Uh, actually, start here, just two, I'm, we're just gonna do two points. Everybody can do this with me. Even though, and let's all do it for Jeanette. Let's send her a whole bunch of love and do this for her. Even though I'm having night terrors, I deeply and profoundly love myself. Even though I'm feeling very scared, I deeply and profoundly love myself. Even though I feel terror and I feel so much fear, I choose to feel peaceful and calm. I'm going to do that again. Even though I'm having night terrors, I deeply and profoundly love myself. Even though I feel very scared, I deeply and profoundly accept these feelings. Even though I, I feel terror and I feel so much fear, I choose to feel peaceful and calm. And then what you can do, Jeanette, is right here, this is the collarbone spot. I tap both sides, and you can just say, I choose to feel peaceful and calm. I choose to feel peaceful and calm. I choose to embrace these feelings. I choose to feel peaceful and calm. I choose to embrace my fear. I choose to embrace my terror. I choose to feel peaceful and calm. Just like that, Jeanette, over and over and over again, you can just do that tapping. And notice, if you sort of tune in and notice on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being a lot, how much fear you have, before you tap and after, that will be really helpful because that will, uh, that will allow you to um, have a sense of how well it's working. Okay? I hope I'm not getting too dark. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Let's see. We've got time for a couple more. I hope that's helpful. Um, 
Um, Ananda, I'm going to say the tapping, same thing for you. If you go over to my Facebook page and do the tapping, it works very well for pain. Uh, Nick Ortner's book, The Tapping Solution, fantastic book. The World Tapping Summit begins um, on February 27th. You'll get to hear plenty of people not only talk about tapping, but doing tapping for pain, things like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, Ananda. I would encourage you to register for the tapping, the uh, World Tapping Summit. There's a link in in my uh, the tapping Facebook session on my Facebook page, so you can find it there. You can probably also find it here on Hay House. Um, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. I always look for what are you feeling resentful about in your life. I would start by having somebody make a list of all of the things that they're feeling resentful about. And then find somebody, a partner, a friend, somebody who can help you begin working on them one by one, because that's very often part of what's going on is just dealing with, um, uh, not just dealing with, but part of the fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, at least I have found in my work with clients is related to um, chronic resentment as well. Oh, sorry, it's getting dark in here all of a sudden. Okay, let's see. Um, Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. How do I t How do I turn a situation around from feeling frustrated with working with a party who refuses to pay for damages that came from another unit into mine? I'm struggling dealing with it. I tap on it, Heidi, first of all. And then um I would actually uh make sure Now this is intuitive, Heidi, right now. There's a book called um Grow Yourself Back Up by John Lee. Uh, maybe it's called Growing Yourself Back Up by John Lee, J-O-H-N-L-E-E. -E. A lot of times when we're dealing with power struggles with people, we get our buttons pushed and we automatically go into a regress state where suddenly we're not an adult anymore who knows what to do, what the next steps are, or at least knows how to get help to figure out the next steps. But instead, we're like an angry 10-year-old or an angry 5-year-old. And young children, when we regress to a young place, we're not in the position to make smart choices. And so we often feel stuck and uh, helpless and hopeless. So I would really encourage you to check out that book because it talks a lot about emotional regression and growing ourselves back up. And one of the things you can do, Heidi, I've done it here before, is close your eyes and just ask your subconscious mind to give you a number related to the situation Notice the first number that occurs to you and then ask your subconscious to give you a memory related to that number, that age, where something like this happened before. And then that's the situation you want to deal with. Two things happen. Number one, you start to feel better. You begin to grow yourself up. You get some objectivity from the current situation and you see how it relates to the past. And number two, you begin to shift the energy around the situation. You know, I've a, there's, in my second book called Life Makeovers, there's a story in there about a young man who backed into my car and then called the police and said I hit him because he was looking to get money. And I had no choice. I was suddenly being sued for money for an accident I did not commit. I had a witness in the car with me, but it didn't matter because she was with me. And while the adult me continue to go through the steps I needed to go through with the court system and the police department, the, uh, the wise, spiritual, higher part of me began praying for this young man and asking the universe to help him to get his needs met so he didn't have to get his needs met in this um, uh, unlawful way. And I kept praying and praying and praying for this young man. And one day, Heidi, I got a phone call from the police station that said that, that an unexpected witness had come forward and had, had admitted that, um, that in fact I didn't hit this young man, that he backed into me. Out of the clear blue, and boy, I'll tell you, it just, it just made me such a believer in prayer. Um, praying for people, you know, that we are having a hard time with. So uh, those are some things I would recommend. Okay, let's do... Um, um, Let's see. Hi, Europe. Ibolia. Hello. I love the fact that this is so um, 
this is so uh, global. Um, Kakya says, how do I stop obsessive eating? You know what? There's a gal, Susan Pierce Thompson. She's written a book that's coming out by Hay House called um, Bright Line Eating. I think her work is really, really good. I followed her for quite some time. And uh, if you Google Bright Line Eating, I think I'm saying that right, Chelsea. Maybe you can just um, do me a favor and give me the um, comment with the book title if you know it. Uh, I think it's Bright Line Eating. Um, but it's Susan Pierce Thompson. And if you Google that, Kakya, um, check, out, uh, check out her website. She does videos. Um, she's very smart. Um, she spent uh, a number of years in OA and has kept a lot of weight off for a long time. And she addresses obsessive eating directly. And I think she does it really well. So I would recommend that. Okay. Let's see, my dear friends, this is so much fun, and I know I need to stop soon. Um, okay. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you suggest for extreme body pain? Vicki, you know, I'm a huge fan of really, really good acupuncture. Um, finding someone who's, um, who's, thank you, Susan Pierce Thompson. Um, finding somebody who's really skilled specifically in dealing with a lot of pain. The other thing is so important, Vicki, is looking at the emotional causes of pain. Stress and emotional discord, uh, the last place for it to land is in the body. So tapping can really help with the pain. I would absolutely make sure you join the uh, World Tapping Summit so that you can um, see if somebody's doing some tapping around pain uh, and listen to it and do the tapping with them. I think that that could be very, very helpful. Okay. Um, and just remember, those of you with insomnia, anxiety, depression, fear, um, especially right now, you know, we're going through big changes. And these changes are important. It's a rocky road right now, but I have faith in us people. I have faith in humanity. I have faith um, in the spiritual principles that I have lived my whole life. And we are just going through, some, we're coming through the birth canal. And as Like I said last night uh, on my Facebook Live page, we are way too far ahead to go back. So we're moving forward in a really great direction. It's just that we've got we've to dismantle some systems that haven't been working. So a lot of people are feeling anxious all over the world, not just in the United States. And so it's so important that we engage in these kinds of conversations, that we engage in the, the therapies that are really supportive, um, and that we make our own personal growth and our own personal health a priority, and that we, we do the consistent work to grow ourselves back up. At, um, at CherylRichardson.com, I write a weekly blog, and there's a blog I did a few weeks ago about um, growing ourselves, how I grew myself back up on a yoga mat one morning when I was feeling, feeling really frightened. So if you go to CherylRichardson.com, you can subscribe to the blog. This week, I think I'm gonna be, um, I'll, I'll post a notice about that, but right under newsletters, you can see it. You'll find it. It's just a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm really doing a lot of writing these days, supporting people and getting through this difficult time, and we will get through it. I promise you. So, all right. Hey House Live, April 8th, the Extreme Self-Care Boot Camp. I'm going to be there in Vegas. My husband, Michael, is going to be there. I'm hoping I can convince him to come into the workshop because so many people read about him and love to meet him. And um, I'm so excited to be there, and I hope I get to meet you. I hope that you'll be there. And uh, if you are, and you were here on this Facebook Live, come up and say hi to me. Let me know that you were here. That would be terrific. And um, until then, I just so appreciate you spending this time with me. I really do. And uh, take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye.